you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Ruckus Analytics Cloud Service for Network Intelligence and Service Assurance. The videos in this series will describe the various views, services, and capabilities of the Ruckus Analytics platform. In this video, I'll be describing the data presented in the AP Details Report dashboard. So let's get started. Here I am logged into Ruckus Analytics. Uh, the first thing to know about the AP Details Report is that it can be accessed in two different ways. One method is more direct and the other is more functional. The direct method is used by navigating to and expanding Report on the left side pane. Then click on the AP Details link. This will open the AP Details Report and on this page you'll be required to enter an AP's MAC address. The MAC address must be entered hexadecimally with colons between each byte, as shown here. No other format will be accepted. Once a valid MAC address is entered, you'll be taken to the AP Details report for that device. A more common method to access the AP's details will more likely be from either an analytics view or from another report. Because let's face it, you typically will only access this report if there's a legitimate reason derived from analytics or something seen in another report. So let's navigate to the wireless network report. I'll go ahead and select a larger time range and apply a device filter to clear out some of the clutter from my overall network. So pretty much anywhere in this report where you see an AP name, you can click on it and it'll take you to the AP details for that AP. So from the top APs by client tile, I'm gonna select one of the APs with more clients. After all that, here we are at the AP details report. This report, as its name implies, provides details about one specific access point. It combines much of the data displayed in other available reports and filters that data so it's specific to the single selected AP. Like other Ruckus Analytics report, this report is broken up into tiles. So let's take a closer look at the various tiles available in this report. At the top left is the summary tile. It provides basic details about the AP, including its IP address, MAC address, the serial number, the AP's current status and uptime, as well as how many times the AP has rebooted in the selected time period. Below the summary is the details tile. This tile contains more details about the specified AP, including its hierarchy in the network, from the cluster all the way down to the AP, and it also contains the AP model number, firmware version, configured location, and detailed controller information. Now over at the top right is the performance tile. It displays the minimum, maximum, and average traffic rate, number of clients, and signal to noise ratio for the AP. And below that is the stats tile. It displays the total traffic for the time period, as well as a breakout of transmitted and received traffic. It shows the number of SSIDs, the AP services, and a total number of clients that have connected over the selected time period. Now below that, we have the uptime history tile. It shows when an AP has been up or down over different time periods. This graph gives you the ability to deviate from the overall report time filter to define one only for this graph, as well as the ability to change the duration of each plot point on the graph. Depending on the time range selected, this may allow granularity of minutes all the way up to weeks or months. Additionally, passing your mouse over any of the graph's plot points We'll display the details. These options and behaviors are common in most of the graphs shown in this presentation. Next, we have the traffic trend graphs. There are four different graphs within this tile. First, you have the traffic by usage and traffic by radio graphs. These are actual throughput graphs. In the traffic by usage graph, you can select or deselect which lines to plot by clicking on the colored squares. The options are transmitted traffic, total traffic, user traffic, management traffic, and received traffic. On the traffic by radio graph, you can graph 5 GHz radios, 2.4 GHz radios, or all radios. The next pair of graphs display average traffic, both by usage and by radio. They display similar data and allow the same selections of what to plot, except these graphs deal with averages, not absolute traffic values. As with the other graphs, when you pass your mouse over a plot point, an information box is displayed containing details for the selected metrics at that specific time period. Next are the unique client trends over time graphs. The first shows the total number of unique clients over time, and the second shows the total client traffic volume over time. 
For these graphs, you can modify the date range and granularity with the drop down boxes. On the client count graph, you can toggle the check boxes to display or remove the plotting of all radios, 2.4 gigahertz radios, or 5 gigahertz radios. In the traffic graph, you can toggle all user traffic, transmit user traffic, or receive user traffic. And again, on either of these graphs, pausing the pointer over the plot points displays a box with details for the selected metrics and time period. Below that is the top 10 clients by traffic volume tile. It displays information about the top 10 clients who have consumed the most traffic with both donut charts and a graph format. Passing your mouse over the clients in the donut shows the total traffic for each client. The graph shows traffic over time at specific intervals. There's a drop down that allows you to choose whether to display transmitted data only, received data only, or total user traffic data. The other drop down allows you to adjust the granularity of the graph. Within the graph, the squares allow selection or deselection of clients to display in the graph. The colors of the squares correspond to the colors on the donut chart. And below that is the top application by traffic tile. It displays which applications are consuming the most traffic in both the donut chart and graph formats. Passing your mouse over the applications in the donut shows the total throughput for each application. The graph shows throughput over time at specific intervals. Like the previous graph, you can select which traffic to plot and the granularity of the data. The squares allow selection or deselection of applications to display in the graph, and the square colors correspond to the colors in the donut chart. The table view displays the same data in a table format. By default, it displays the top 10 applications by traffic, but this can be changed with the dropdown. Additionally, you can use the gear icon to modify which columns are displayed and increase the number of rows to display per page. The session table provides details for client sessions established with this AP, including start and end times, duration, connected SSID and radio, as well as throughput during the session. You can change the number of sessions to display with the dropdown and can use the gear icon to modify which columns are displayed and can increase the number of rows to display per page. Next are the signal received strength indicator trend, signal to noise ratio trend, and airtime utilization trend graphs. They provide details on each of these signal slash service quality elements. Each has the ability to modify the time span and granularity of the data displayed, as well as the ability to select or deselect what data points to graph. And as with all of these graphs, you can mouse over any plot point to display a box with details for the selected metrics. Next, we have the Client Details tile. It contains a table that shows a list of clients with the highest traffic volume in the network. You can sort based on any column by clicking on the column header. By default, it displays the top 10 clients, but this can be changed with the dropdown. Additionally, you can use the gear icon to modify which columns are displayed and can increase the number of rows to display per page. The Alarms tile is a table that lists any alarms generated for this AP for the time period you specify. By default, it displays the last 10 alarms, and this again can be changed with the dropdown. Last up is the Events table. It lists the events generated for this AP for the time period that you specify. Like the previous table, you can sort based on any column by clicking on the column header. By default, it displays the last 1,000 events, but this can be changed with the dropdown and you can use the gear to modify which columns are displayed and the number of rows. If you have viewed the previous videos in this series, you may have noticed that many of these items displayed in this report look familiar. That's because this report is pretty much a conglomeration of several other reports, including the wireless network report, the AP report, the client report, the application report, and the airtime utilization report. What makes this report valuable is that it combines each of those reports and specifically tailors them for this individual access point. As with most reports in Ruckus Analytics, this report can be exported to a comma-separated value CSV file or to a PDF. Selecting the CSV option contains all the raw data that populates each of these tables, graphs, and data points combined into a single zip file. The PDF export output looks very similar to the screen we've been viewing, which each of the current tiles, graphs, and tables displayed in the same graphical format. So this completes this presentation describing the Ruckus Analytics AP Details Report Dashboard. I hope you found this information useful and hope you return for more of the presentations in this Ruckus Analytics series. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation.